a pearlescent oval opened over the arena floor, twenty feet in front of the high box. Two figures stepped through. The first was someone I had never seen in person before, but I knew him instantly, and the mere sight of him was enough to sober me from my fatigue. The second I was less prepared for. Tessia looked exactly as she had when I'd last seen her. Although she looked the same, she was immediately and unequivocally not Tessia. This person masquerading as my oldest friend moved with aggressive confidence. Logically, I understood what I was looking at. But the cold, distrustful look Cecilia gave me from Tessia's eyes still drove a knife through my chest. Agrona's appearance wasn't unexpected, necessarily, but Tessia, Cecilia, could Tessia even be saved? Was she still in there somewhere? And if she could, was protecting her more important than depriving Agrona of the legacy? I hadn't been ready to face these questions. I still wasn't. I should have been afraid. There was no way I could fight Agrona. I wasn't even sure that I could fight Cecilia, knowing nothing about her powers in this world. But I wasn't frightened. Clear crystal bars thrust up out of the ground in a square with me at the center. The crystal had a liquid smoothness to it, turning just above my head so the bars all ran together, forming a cage. Cecilia had pulled all the mana out of the atmosphere, even out of my body. If I still relied on a mana core, this single spell would have left me powerless. I couldn't even begin to wrap my mind around how such a thing was even possible. I find myself quite eager to see how your new abilities function. I'll take great pleasure in dismantling you piece by piece to find out. I glanced around the stadium. I was surprised to see Kara with one foot on the scorched dirt of the combat field, fallen into a kneel at Agrona's presence, which must have interrupted her rushing out to check on me. She, too, risked lifting her head just enough to watch me. There was genuine terror in her scarlet gaze as her lips moved in some silent prayer. She had been a good friend to me. While I'd been gazing around the Colosseum, the scythes had flown out of the high box and maneuvered around the arena floor to box me in. Saris's face was unreadable, her thoughts carefully hidden. I again met Cecilia's eyes, searching within them for something, some sign. I had made a promise, but I didn't even know if the woman to whom I'd promised myself was alive in her own body. Agrona waved for the scythes to take me. I'll admit I'm ever so slightly disappointed. I expected you'd have yet another trick up your sleeve. Still, even if what I've witnessed from you so far is the extent of your abilities, I'm sure I'll find dissecting you a useful distraction. I had to decide. It was time to leave. I could go without her, or I could try to take her with me, try and find some way to pull Cecilia out of Tess's body, bring her back. Or I grew slightly sick at the thought. But it was the clearest path forward, the most decisive measure. I could assure that Agrona couldn't use Tessia or Cecilia, that whatever power the legacy had couldn't be controlled. I felt my eyes grow wet, but I hardened my heart. Forgive me, Tessia. Bracing myself, I channeled ether throughout my exhausted body. The cage bars were unnaturally strong, but my armor and Asurin physique protected me as I crashed through them, sending crystalline shards spraying in every direction. Mid-step, I conjured the ether blade, drew it back, aimed for her core. Her teal eyes followed me every inch of the way, as if she were able to trace my progress even when using burst step. When the tip of my sword was pressed against her sternum, her eyes widened and flashed green. Mossy green veins spread out across her face beneath her skin, and for an instant she looked resigned as a strained smile graced her painted lips. Her body trembled, her hand rising not for the blade, not in defense, but toward my face. A caress. Ut, please. It was Tessia's voice. I released the ether blade. She held my eyes for a heartbeat. Two. Then the green veins receded. Tess, Cecilia, took a step back, giving me a look of deepest loathing. Oh, that was close, wasn't it? Agrona said, amused. You really thought for a second you could do it, didn't you? You're only cold-hearted and calculating when it's easy, Gray. 
In reality, you're weak, emotional, and rather prone to attachment. What should have been a moment of victory instead rang hollow and empty, filling my mouth with a taste of cold ashes. Take him, Agrona ordered. The scythes closed in. Agrona's confident smirk finally slipped away as I activated God's step. He reached for me, his power suddenly unleashed. His look of astonishment was the last thing I saw as the etheric pathways took me far away from the Colosseum and the Victoriad.